Greetings YouTube. For those of you who don't watch my channel regularly and just happen to click on this video, thanks for doing that. I like to keep my videos under 10 minutes, uh, sometimes under 5 minutes. If I'm not careful, this video could be half an hour long because there's so much to break down in this Are You Happy With The Buffs to Yondu and Deadpool X-Force. It takes so many twists and turns. It is like a crazy choose your own ending children's novel. Uh, as a reminder though, let's start off by reminding the community that there is an update, sort of, that Kabam is acknowledging that the two major issues, uh, lag con slash connectivity issues caused by memory issues and freezing during energy refills have been acknowledged and are being worked on. Of course, say what you will. If these two major issues were a revive spawning itself too many times or a, uh, a bug that caused the defender to freeze and allow himself to be hit without fighting back, they would have already been fixed. Even when Kabam acknowledges things and does their best to try to fix them, if they're pro Kabam moves, they'll take a few days, maybe a week. If they're pro player moves, they'll take a few minutes, maybe an hour. That's just the reality of what it is. It's worth noting for the historical record and moving on. So, on the surface, this is like an interesting forum post about the Yontu and Deadpool X-Force buffs. Now, I'll be the first to say, I really like Deadpool X-Force's new animations, and that's about it. I think it looks cool. I know that there is a rotation that you can eventually get decent damage, but when you compare the bleed damage to somebody as user-friendly as, say, the bleed god himself, Nick Fury, it becomes a bit of a joke and even disrespectful Nick Fury to put them in the same sentence. Although I have to put them in the same sentence in one regard, and that's that I continue to use both of them and just about everything I do since I use full suicides for the restoration kit synergy. But the, the original post uh, I should definitely read is stated as follows. What are your thoughts on the buffs to Yondu and Deadpool X-Force? Out of the two, I prefer Yondu way more. That prowess removal and passive furies does make him better. As for, as for Deadpool X-Force, I liked the animations, but I feel something is missing from the kit and could have had a bit more to make him slightly more decent. Now, notice he said a bit more to make him slightly more decent. He's not expecting him to be the best champion or even a top 10 champion in his class. Of course, that'd be very difficult since the mutant class is so stacked already. Deadpool X-Force feels as though it was designed for beginner level players to lower mid-level uh, players. He can be fun in variant 8. Though that's where I feel I can use him. As for Yondu, he's an option uh, you can use if you don't have a champ who can remove prowess effectively. Not the top, but at a decent place. So, kind of argue Yondu made him a little bit more middle tier. Deadpool X-Force is still at the bottom of the heap, at least for usability. One of the interesting things that will be touched on throughout this video, though, is the concept that Deadpool X-Force, as he wrote word for word in this, feels as though it was designed for beginner level players to lower mid-level players. I find that to be an interesting statement because uh, whenever you're starting out and when you're seven years in like I am, like why do I love Corvus and Cosmic Ghost Rider? Why do I still uh, very much, um, bra I don't know if brags are a word, but why am I still so proud that, that they're two of my first three ranked fours? Because they do the biggest yellow numbers possible. I took, just for fun if you missed it, with Katie Candy last night, uh, Cosmic Ghost Rider, into Incursions. And man, was that like a relaxing vacation of crazy damage even when you're fighting some of those pesky every five rooms Ultron bots. Uh, you can see some comments. Waiting for the Deadpool X buff, we only got animation, maybe a bug or something. It's a little shot at uh, the fact that he doesn't really feel like he's better. Yondu, yes, Diplex. No, I'm not a fan of Diplex's animations, and I know I'll uh, maybe get hate for it. The skip looks silly, and the slap looks like an unfinished T-Pose animation. He only has bleed, taunt, and power gain if awakened. Had as a 2022 champion have such a little in their kit, and the bleed damage isn't even that crazy to justify that little uh, that they have overhauled. Um... Says he disagrees with the animations, feels strongly about the kit. Maybe dumb comparison, just look at Nick Fury. I just brought up Nick Fury. I don't think it's a dumb comparison when you consider the synergy partners in both of them. Yondu's okay. Deadpool X-Force is bad. Deadpool X-Force gets outclassed by unbuffed 2017 champs. Bitter Steel really is posting a fascinating point. 
He's five years outdated at release. It's a pretty poor buff. He has one extra piece of utility than pre-buff making his total utility list. Uh, one. Both the buffs weren't up to the mark. All right, so eventually we're going to get to an interesting commentary. I know these are all, you know, important comments, but I don't want this video to be half an hour long, so I'm skipping all the way down to what I refer to, even though technically it's not his name, Kabam Mike, because Kabam Mike often thinks he's dropping the mic, and yet the mic is disconnected from the volume and uh, respectfulness of the community and the reality that is the feelings of the community. Uh, so... In response to Saiyan's comment, how does a 2022 champ have such little in their kit? Though, I uh, would certainly count off a few points for that use of there. Deadpool is not a 2022 champion. What a profound way to start this message. He's from 2015. This game continues to get more complex with every month that passes. And while that's to be expected, we do not want to add even more complexity to the early game through champion updates. I think he's trying to say that you're going to fight him a lot in like act one, two, three, maybe four. But we've seen champions that were released in the first couple years get way better without making it more complicated. So I would vehemently disagree with this first point. But then it gets even weirder. This is why we kept Storm's kit simple, which, by the way, I love Storm's buff. And it's why we did it with Deadpool. These are champions that new players are, this is where it gets weird, more likely to obtain, not to fight, but to obtain and use, and we want to keep their kits more simple. I believe this is Kabam Mike's potentially accidental way of admitting that players when they open crystals, are more likely to get the OG champions than new champions, even though in past forum posts going back years ago, they've tried to state that every champion has an equal drop rate in the crystal, which also makes no sense, and we've done videos, though not in the past few months on this, that because Kabam owns the patent for all algorithms in all crystals, it's legal for them to make it much easier for you to land on a Deadpool X-Force as a six-star than a Hercules, for example. But I was quite surprised and a little bit amused that he used the phrase, players are more likely to obtain and use, referring to a 2015 champion. All right, so that's part two of three. You might be thinking, what else is there in this video? Well, of course, the man who's constantly on his knees and not because he's praying to Kabam, it's everybody's least favorite cousin, the crazy cousin at the Thanksgiving Day uh, holiday dinner that no matter what defends grandma, and that is grounded in anything but wisdom. People aren't keeping the perspective. They're looking at where they are at in the game as useful. When it was just pointed out that Useful and higher-end content isn't the expressed goal. I'm sorry. If you're not looking to use a overhauled champion in higher-end content, what's the point? Like you're openly saying, "Oh yeah, he's not gonna, he's not gonna be good enough to do anything like for older players." We're not gonna take those training wheels off that tricycle ever. But who's going to ride fast anyway? Uh, by the way, Big Papa Seabone. What a name. Unless they massively improve a champ's damage and utility, they aren't cracking that ceiling and getting on the end content squad. Breaking into that club is such a rare event that Kabam is so ridiculously scared of doing with reworks that your typical buff isn't coming within a mile of that. Great point. They'd much rather a champ stay suck then suddenly become all the rage and be considered indispensable for advancement. Just because a handful of people frame their arguments around Everest content being out of reach doesn't mean everyone lacks perspective. Is Deadpool X-Force worthless? No. Would I classify him as valuable now? No. He still sucks. It's just less than that's mainly because of his animations. Now look, there's an entire page 
of this that we're not going to get to. But we're already at 10 minutes. And like I said at the beginning of this video, I don't want this to be a 20 minute video. I think there are some takeaways from this conversation that we can highlight quickly before we end it. One, all of these points about beginning players are stupid and also not helpful to the community. By the way, Kaban Mike also says, why are new players getting five stars? We're talking about two and three stars. Champs for PHCs and daily crystals. Uh, again, are you saying then that, that that's not relevant? That you're only thinking about champions that aren't, like, because you're also talking about, they're not even touching on four stars here, which is interesting because four stars are in premiums. I think Kabam Mike knew that if he came out in the description of the buff and said, hey, you're not going to like this guy but other than his animations at all. We're basically just doing this for beginners. Nobody would have been hyped. So you kind of bury the lead until people realize it, and then you cover for yourself. I think that last point we talked about is so accurate, and it's what I talked to Kabam Broccoli about months ago in my interview with him. Kabam doesn't want to make champions too OP because they lose money every time they do that. So when you buff a champion, if they're a 3 out of 10, and you can buff them to where they're a 5 out of 10, that's much better for them than if they go from a 3 out of 10 to a 9 out of 10. Even though I think Storm's damage maybe took her from like a, a 5 to a 7, 5 to an 8 even. Either way, this is one of the worst forum post responses in the history of the game and grounded wisdom has added to that sentiment and i can't even say sentiment right because i've got a headache uh what do you think about these posts what do you think about these responses what do you think about these buffs let me know in the comments below and thanks as always for supporting my marvel casino champions youtube channel